Hello, this is Rajat Mishra, and we are back with a yet another episode of the News Roundup, in which we track all the news that has made headlines in the past one week, how they happened, and when they happened. So, in the next few minutes, we are going to answer all your questions. So, let's quickly go through all the big headlines that happened in the last one week. The first big news is about the Amrapali's verdict. The Supreme Court, in a significant verdict, provided relief to 42,000 home buyers duped by bankrupt company Amrapali Group. The Supreme Court cancelled the Real Estate Regulation Development Authority's registration of the Amrapali Group companies for defrauding home buyers, diverting their money, and failing to complete the projects on time. In an unprecedented move, the Supreme Court appointed the state owned NBCC to complete the projects on time. Also, the Supreme Court instructed the Enforcement Directorate to investigate into the money laundering allegations on the Amrapali Group. In an unprecedented verdict, the two-judge bench of the Supreme Court comprising Justice Arun Mishra and Uday Umesh Lalit held that company has misappropriated fund of the home buyers through dummy companies, bogus bills and also sold the projects to related party at undervalued prices. The court also stated that there was a serious kind of the fraud played upon the home buyers between the Greater Noida, Noida and the bank authorities. And finally, the Supreme Court also barred the Amrapali Group from taking further new real estate projects for failing to deliver projects on time and defrauding the home buyers money. The second news is about the big bureaucratic reshuffle. In a first major bureaucratic reshuffle that took place after Narendra Modi government came into the power in May. The centre on Wednesday changed 12 government secretaries of the 12 different departments. While Finance Secretary Subhash Chandra Garg has appointed as a Power Secretary, Disinvestment Secretary Atanu Chakraborty, a 1985 Gujarat Kader IAS officer, is going to replace the Subhash Chandra Garg as a new Economic Affairs Secretary in the Finance Ministry. Garg, who was believed to be behind the idea of sovereign bond in the budget that meant that government is going to borrow money for, per, uh, for the per, government expenditure from the overseas market. And this idea of overseas borrowing got criticized from expert, the RBI governor. Also, the Garg was at loggerhead with the Bimal Jalan committee who was constituted last year to decide the access capital framework of the RBI. And also, the Garg has submitted its dissent note to the committee. In a surprise move, Economic Affairs Secretary and Finance Secretary Subhash Chandra Garg has sought a voluntary retirement after government appointed him as a power secretary in a big bureaucratic reshuffle on Tuesday. The third big news that we are tracking this week is about the Fortune 500 Global List. Mukesh Ambani-led Reliance Industries jumped 42 places to become highest ranking Indian company to be featured on Fortune 500 Global List. Besides RIL and IOC, there are some other companies who got mentioned in the Fortune 500 Global List. And some names among them are State Bank of India, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation Limited, Bharat Petroleum and some other companies as well. The last big news that we have been tracking this week is about the distress the automobile sector is facing. So thus, in this regard, ACMA, Automotive Component Manufacturing Association of India, which alone employs 5 million people, sought a reduction of the GST to 18% for all the automobile component in order to revive the sector which is facing unprecedented crisis and slowdown in the vehicle sales. Currently, around 70% of our automobile component already comes under the GST slab of 18%. However, the remaining 30% of the automobile component comes under the GST slab of 28% that also includes additional sales ranging from 1% to 15% that depends and varies in accordance with the size, length and the engine of the car. So this was all for this week's News Roundup. We will be back with a yet another episode of the News Roundup next week. Till then, subscribe to Outlook Money and keep getting more news updates.